Oh, I think we're live. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's uh, Pat Sherwood <laughs> and Rory McKernan here. Uh, we're very just, good similarities, actually. Yes. And uh, so, so, yeah, we're just going to take half an hour, maybe, to answer some of your questions that you guys posted on the members page. Um, uh, I think I posted before that it's going to be on the business page, but we figured it out how we can do it on the members page, so it's just for you. Uh, so what we'll do, I think without further ado, uh, we'll just crack on straight away. So we've made a little list of all the comments and we'll just go through them in, uh, in, in kind of a, a fashion. So first we've got a question from, from Kat Grocock and Luke Amrily Waller. Should I sign up for the Open if I won't make it to regionals? And secondly, what can I do between now and then to get to regionals? And that's Luke's question. Uh, Luke's already had an answer on that, and the, uh, we'll deal with the first part in a second, but the second part does involve buying a plane ticket and just going and buying some tickets and, and sucking it up. I don't know whether we're all going to regionals. Uh, but then we've got a really good one. Like I say, it's a cat says, uh, what's the point of doing the Open if I'm going to scale? You have to address this. He's capitalised, so we need to address this. <laughs> um, so if we kind of make it short and succinct, the, the number one thing really is accountability. Um, we had a little chat earlier and, and, and Jamie and I were just kind of talking through it and, and we, we used the analogy of that most people are really sure generally about what they eat, uh, their nutrition practices and, and, and that type of thing. But for people that are serious about getting better at nutrition, um, actually working with someone like Liam, Makes, uh, makes them accountable to, to somebody, to a professional, somebody that knows what they're doing, this type of thing, to improve their nutrition. Uh, so it helps refine all of your practices, what to eat, you gain more confidence, you try things that maybe you wouldn't have usually tried. And that's exactly the same for the CrossFit Open. So that accountability, that's why you would spend the $20 signing up to the CrossFit Open so you're accountable. You're making that commitment of five weeks of the tests. Um, you're making yourself accountable to the coaching team who really look forward to seeing you guys. Um, you know, and pushing yourself outside the comfort zone is, is the obvious one and, and also getting involved with the community. Uh, as an aside, a little message from Andy McTaggart. He says, if you don't sign up, you can't come to the barbecue. I don't know if that's true, <laughs> or not, but, but, um, but Liam, have you got any, any thoughts on that one? Yeah, like one of my, I've done the Open for two years now, and uh, one of the things is I regret not doing it the third, like the three years ago, and you, like the atmosphere is amazing, like even just like the Friday, the Saturday, all through the weekend, like everyone's talking about it, the sense of community is incredible. So I would definitely say like that is a big, big kind of like plus in terms of getting involved um, and just kind of being part of it. But one of the other things that, that for me is like, you will repeat these workouts you know, throughout your whole CrossFit career. Um, and it's a really good chance to be able to do something that the elite of your sport do. So like, if we play football, we can't go and play at Wembley or we can't go and play at White Hart Lane or do whatever. But actually we can go through and do the same workouts as Matt Fraser, as Cara Webb. And we can go through and do exactly what they are, feel the pain, feel like, you know, what did they go through and, and kind of suffer with them. Um, so we get to do exactly what the elite in the sport do. And it's a really good opportunity to say, Jesus Christ, I don't know how they did that. But it's a, it's a way of putting ourselves in terms of, uh, in the same kind of like, um, in the same kind of like pain cave at certain points and understand like what we've all gone through. So I think that's a big, big point for me. Cool. So yeah, summary. So the first thing is why should I sign up? Big reasons, accountability, and also to get some insight into how the best do this sport, okay? Um, so next question, by the way, we've got some people coming in. We've got six viewers. We've got Chris Middleton. We've got Tarek's in the house. Who else have we got? How can we scroll across here? Tom Aiken. Hey, Tom. Must be from uh, from Spain. Katie Howard. Hello, Coach Lucky Katie. Boy. It's freezing. Oh, Tom, yes. Okay, who else have we got? Oh, that's very good. Quite a few. So then, so the next question we've got from Charlotte Keynes. Hello, Charlotte. Um, she says, I'm new to CrossFit, two sessions in. Can, can I sign up to the Open and where do I sign up for it? Well, we've actually uh, created a little handy guide in this very members page. 
uh, and it's super easy. You just go to the files section. It's the, the how-to of the CrossFit Open 2018. How, how will it work at CrossFit Shapesmith? So games.crossfit.com. Click on that, sign up, enter your details, and it's easy as that. Um, super simple question to answer there. Uh, what else? We've got another one here. I think this one is from Stella. Um, really into CrossFit. I still don't know what I'm doing. Uh, you're not that new. I think maybe you're, you're humoring us and giving us good <laughs> questions here. Um, I can sort of do a clean. I trip over my skipping rope sometimes. Can I still do the open? Uh, super simple. Yes, you can. Um, if you are worried or wondering, is your skill level good enough to do the CrossFit Open? Check out these two articles. Again, I'll link them all in this bottom of this video. Um, but check out the one that says, should I do the Open RX or should I scale? Uh, that type of thing. It gives you a list of all of the standards that, that we would say you need to be able to perform. And, and what's really good is that we know generally what's going to happen in the CrossFit Open in terms of the movements. We don't know the workouts, but we know the movements. And throughout the programming, that you've kind of encountered uh, throughout the year, you uh, and, and you are encountering now, we, were pre we are preparing you for this type of stuff. So I don't think there's anything gonna be there to catch you out. Uh, there's, there's still plenty to do if you sign up and, and maybe you can you trip over your own. You can still do single unders. Uh, Liam, anything on that for, for newbies, that type of thing, any recommendations? In terms of, well, in terms of nutrition wise, um like we'll come on to this a little bit more in terms of a bit more specifics in terms of the time of day that you're going to be doing it but in terms of like uh fueling and nutrition wise if you've just started crossfit like you'll understand that it's maybe a little bit more intense than than a lot of like normal kind of gym programs or what you maybe have previously been doing so one of the things that we want to be thinking about in the CrossFit Open is performance. Like, this is not really the time to be maybe trying something new or thinking about kind of like using it to like change body composition. But what we want to be thinking about is like coming into that open workout uh, every week and crushing it. So we want to be thinking about fueling in, a, in an efficient way leading into that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday session. So the traditional kind of uh, carb loading or fueling the night before is maybe a little bit outdated. So what we want to be thinking about is, can we drip feed our nutrition a little bit kind of like in that 48 hours? I think Vicky mentioned this, what should I do in the 48 hours? You should definitely just increase like the size of your main meals or maybe add an extra snack in that 48 hour period prior to when you're going to be doing the, the open wad. So that doesn't give you license to just go and overeat or just kind of shove a load of sugars or, or carbohydrates in and that big bowl of pasta the night before. You know, it's something that you maybe should, uh, maybe should not kind of put into, into your nutrition plan. But just adding a little bit of carbohydrates to main meals, so whether that's some, some potatoes, whether that's some rice, whether that's some grains, uh, whether that's more fruit, this will help to, re like help to kind of fuel your energy stores leading into that workout. What we don't want to do is go into that under fueled and kind of like miss our opportunity to, to give our best score. So that 48 hour period, that's when you want to increase. And then the night before or the day before, just slightly, just keep that uh, consistent. And on the day of the workout, that's when you want to be thinking about it's a top up as opposed to like, right, I'm chasing my nutrition. I need to kind of get a load of food into me. So don't be chasing it on, uh, on competition day. Think about fueling in the, in the two days before. And we'll come on to the specific sessions uh, later on. And I think you've got a article on the Facebook file section as well, I think. Yeah, I'm sure I'll, I'll update it uh, and then I'll, I'll make sure that I link it into, I yeah. would want to say is I'll link it in the show notes <laughs> uh, later on. Um, so we'll make that, uh, we'll, make, we'll update that and make sure that yeah. that's all sorted. But, but genuinely like the, Guides that Liam's produced for things like Inferno Racing, things like District L, these are like little competitions if, you, if you're not aware, um, that we've had a huge uh, following and a huge sign up um, for. These things have worked, um, they're, they're tried, they're tested, so you know it's all free, it's all there, it's all starting you off. Uh, quick hellos, who else we've got coming in? We've got Will, Will Bairds in, uh, Vicky, Vicky Bama, sorry, Bama Davis, she's married now. Um, and Hugh, Hugh is in here as well. Hugh, do some work. Yeah, do some work. Get off, get off Facebook at work. Um, you can comment as well if you want to leave us a comment. We'll, we'll, we'll or, en enable or, or us. question us on anything that we are talking about. Yeah, feel free. I don't know if we can get the. Well, we can write comments back no, as well. Ah, okay. Um, so then we've got one from. I've got a question from Craig Wathen. He asks, "What days will the open wad be programmed?" Um, super simple. 
on that one. Uh, check the article again that we posted about the uh, the Cross Open at Shapesmiths. But we're going to be doing all day on Friday. That's every single WOD class is going to be the CrossFit Open workout. We're going to do them on uh, Saturday. So Saturday afternoon, there'll be three classes in the afternoon. Uh, there'll be on Sunday as well, there'll be opportunity, again, two or three classes, and then Monday in, in the evening as well. So stay tuned for the exact times. We're just sorting out um, the, the exact details on that, but there'll be plenty of opportunity to complete the workouts. Um, and, and kind of get your fill of the CrossFit Open. So on Friday there's going to be no engine mod? Uh, the, the, there'll be an engine mod option for those that wanted to do it, um, but they'll, they'll be slim okay. on, on, the, um, on the engine mods. But the Friday is really all about the CrossFit yeah, Open. Definitely. Cool. So the next one. G given that, um, I guess, the, the, the next question after, after that Craig asked is, uh, will Oh, actually, this is this is Cat Grocock. So, will you release the Shapesmiths wads in advance, considering you won't know what's going on up to Friday's open wad, or do we follow CrossFit.com, thinking Thursdays especially? So, that question. If I'm going to summarise that, so she's asking, do we release them all in advance? Yes, we do. We release all the wads in advance. Nothing changes. The programming is already done. Um, considering we won't know what's coming up. That's okay as well. So Thursdays typically um, will be something that we know what the open work, the open movements are. Um, there will be something that does not include the open uh, movements. So we already know what they are. We just stay away from them on the Thursday. It's still a really good workout. You still get a, you know, a, a really good um, test of fitness. But the things that we know, um, we kind of stay away from. And as the weeks go on, so as, as obviously the workouts are revealed, then we can pop those back into the programming at the start of the, the week. So they kind of go back in. Um, and, and obviously if it whittles down into the fifth week and muscle ups of any kind have uh, not come up yet, then obviously we'll stay away from those on the Thursday as well. So it's, it's all kind of like a, a moving, sliding a bit of programming um, where most of the volume uh, is kind of at the start of the week. That's uh, how we do it there. But no, we don't follow CrossFit.com. Just to jump in on there. so. How, like I said there, the structure of your week in terms of a nutrition point of view, like fueling in that 48 hour period prior, even if you're going to take Thursday as a rest day. So again, we want to be thinking about performance. So those that maybe kind of think about, oh, well, I'm not doing uh, as much exercise or I'm not kind of like depleting my energy stores. I don't need to eat as much. Actually, we want to be the perfect, perfect time to be able to f uh, fuel for the Friday or the Saturday is that Thursday kind of like rest day. So... Don't under eat on the day before if you're going to do it on the Friday, um, even if you're not, uh, even if you're not going to come in and train. So even if you just do some some low intensity aerobic or whatever's programmed, make sure that you do fuel the tank, um, and then don't under fuel on that day. And again, then you'd be thinking, oh, I don't feel quite uh, like fully stocked on a Friday, and then you're chasing it. So what we want to do is, even if you're not going to train, make sure that you uh, that you are kind of drip feeding your your body over the over that Thursday. So I know we've got a lot of different people on very different membership structures. So some people are training the nine sessions, some the 13, some the unlimited. Now, it's important to note that kind of traditional CrossFit programming, and this is like old school, when you do it kind of five, six days a week. Um, so let's take the five days. So you do uh, three days of workouts, you have one day off, you do two days of workouts, and then you have one day off. So that would typically be, be training Monday to Wednesday, have Thursday off, then you train Friday, which would be the open one in this case, and then you train Saturday, then you have Sunday off. So that's a, a typical structure that, that is recommended once you're kind of above kind of six months. Uh, another way to do it, this is common as well, is you train two on, one off, two on, one off, and kind of rinse and repeat. Um, so with those, it kind of comes lifestyle. So some people need the structure, um, some people can kind of train when they want. But it's important that you understand how, if you want to kind of optimize your performance on the day, on the Friday, you need to understand how your body reacts. So I'll talk about myself. I need to be kind of going from a, a rolling start. So I would typically rest on the Wednesday. I would do something like what's programmed on the Thursday, which is kind of a movement-based wad that has no, no movements that's 
going to interfere with a potential competition, uh, and then I'd be ready to go on the Friday. And some people, they really like to rest on the Thursday, so they've done nothing, and they feel good coming in on the Friday. So it does kind of revolve around you knowing yourself in terms of um, how best you train, and then that can obviously feed into uh, your nutrition, but I think it's roughly the same. Yeah. Don't leave the tank empty. Yeah, there's, there's plenty, so the open is only five weeks. So if you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna be eating a lot more on a, on a rest day, or, or I need to eat a little bit more in the two days prior, you can adjust the subsequent meals on the, on the Saturday, or the Sunday, or the Monday, to, to you know, maybe kind of balance that increase uh, intake prior to the session. But what we don't wanna do is, we don't wanna be thinking, oh, I earned the fuel on that day, and now, uh, you know, now I don't have another chance to do it. So there's 47 other weeks of the year, to work on other areas, this one is all about performance. So we want to be thinking, like going into the sessions, ready to go, ready to rip that barbell, dumbbell, whatever, um, and then we can adjust post subsequent meals in terms of like uh, how we how we got on from there. Yeah. So just, so just to summarise, we're just talking about programming, how that looks, what's the, the normal week look like, and that type of thing. In short, it looks exactly the same. Um, except the Thursdays, we just stay away from any movements that may be in the CrossFit Open. So it doesn't change. Stick to, to what you've been doing all year. Um, we've got a question from Sophie Adams, who's asking, how much time should I take off, stroke taper, each week prior to doing the workout for optimum performance? Um, I think maybe we've just answered that um, in terms of, you've got to know how you work. Maybe you have a day off, before, maybe you have a rolling start. Uh, that kind of comes down to how much you can train. Uh, we've got Isabel, Isabel Day, uh, do, do I do more or less sessions than usual? Don't change a thing, I think is the, the kind of uh, the answer on that. Just, just treat it as an, another wad and yeah. you, you know. That's, that's a big thing for me, like some people can put a lot of pressure onto it and this is not, the open isn't about pressure, it's about enjoyment, so it's just another workout. They're not going to be any different to the ones that, that you do every single week. Yeah. So for us, just go and enjoy it, and you know, it's just, just another walk. Like, you know, it's, they don't put pressure on yourself. Yeah, definitely. Uh, another one from, uh, from Isabel. Do you go through the movements before the open workout like you normally do in a wad? Uh, uh, we do. We, we, we run you through everything, we talk you through the movement standards, we give you extra tips on the day, and just generally shepherd you through the whole, uh, the whole hour. Sometimes if CrossFit HQ released like a really long 20 minute workout, we may run over by five or 10 minutes just because logistics um, get stretched. But other than that, yeah, we take you through and give you the same Shakespeare's experience. We do a, a brief, a rebrief, and a debrief at the end um, before we kind of um, get you to entering your scores. Um, what else have we got? Ah, we've got a good one here from Craig Wathen and LB. Can we repeat if desired, or is it one and done? So that means um, because you get a, a, a it's a four-day window, isn't it? Four-day window to complete these these workouts. Um, can you do it multiple times? To answer that question, um, I mean, firstly, it's important that we know that people that haven't done the workout yet they get priority in a class. Okay, so we want to get as many people through in the community as possible, so they take priority. Uh, secondly, the you need to question what are your aims. Okay, what are your aims? And also, uh, what does repeating the workout cost you? Uh, if your aim is to continually get better and get fitter and, and kind of keep pushing along and, and you're not going to be going to regionals, like you pretty much know already if you were going to go to regionals, um, but that's going to cost you fitness if you repeat it. Okay, it's probably going to, it's going to impact the rest of your week and you're going to have to, to implement more recovery strategies. So it's just time. Uh, and we still need to be um, kind of making sure we're improving across the, across the board. If um, kind of you feel you really screwed up, you didn't get it, or you kind of completely had a nightmare and you're really upset about it, come, come and see us and we'll treat everybody um, as individuals and, and work on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, but yeah, repeat, mm, maybe not necessary. What do you feel? Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's necessary, if I'm honest. Um, like, it, again, it's just another word. Like, 
you know, what is the point in terms of in terms of repeating it? Like, yeah. what are you trying to get out of it? What are you trying to achieve? Like, yeah, if you are a competitive athlete, then maybe. But mm. if not, just come in and do the program and it's normal. Yeah. Um, you know, we will. There'll be times in the future where you can repeat it uh, and try and beat the score. But actually, you're probably not going to beat the score in terms of two day turnaround. Um, unless for some reason, you know, like yeah. what you messed up completely. But one of the other areas, if you are going to repeat it for a nutrition point of view, is like look at where you fatigued or why why you feel that you could improve. Like, was it? Did you go into the workout feeling like, you know, like a lightheaded, or did you feel that you were under fueled? Yeah. Like, was it a nutrition issue or was it just a skill issue or a strength issue? Yeah. And then this is a big thing of the open as well. Maybe I'm going to kind of jump ahead. But the open kind of exposes us to where we are, like our weak areas, and where we can work on in the future. So, is it from was it from a nutrition point of view that you failed, um, and then we can adjust the nutrition strategies based on that for a the subsequent work, workouts for the rest of the four weeks, um, but b for going forward, like in terms of like fueling your competition days here and fueling yeah. your training in a more efficient way. So that's probably another reason why to sign up for it as well. Spot um, on. So yeah, I mean, I mean, back when I guess back when I first started CrossFit 2011, the, the standard, the gap between kind of your average gym goer who was underground um, kind, of, kind of training, you, the gap between the, the general CrossFit gym goer and between those guys going to regionals, it was all very attainable. So, I mean, I remember one year, I think Andy might have judged me, I think this was 2013, I repeated one workout five times. <laughs> Um, so I speak from experience here, and I really wish I had somebody to tell me, "What are you doing? You're an idiot." Um, you know that was that was way back. I repeated it five times. Nobody needs to repeat five times. I didn't end up going to going to regionals that year. Um, you know, I wasn't even on the cusp. So you've really got to kind of think, right? What what am I doing it for? And, and have a really good reason. And come to chat to your coaches. That's that's the best thing to do if you want to kind of chat in depth. Come come speak to these these guys. They're all experts. They know what they've done. They know what they're doing. They've done the open several times. Um, but yeah, so so that's the argument on the one and done type thing. So do it once. Be happy with your effort. Got a really good one from uh, Miguel and Stella on traveling during the CrossFit Open. So Miguel's asking, I have to do two of the open wads before and after two 14-hour long flights. Any advice on how to minimize the effects of jet lag, uh, dehydration, sleep deprivation, uh, recovery, etc.? Is it still a good I idea to sign up? So I think uh, Liam's got some some points on this. Yeah, like one of the biggest things that you can do, like kind of three main areas for when we travel. Like the the biggest thing is to try and prep some of your own food like plain food uh, although it's really nice and everyone loves plain food like it isn't going to be the best in terms of fueling your workout if you're going to land it and kind of train so being prepped either with um taking some like we do it with a like a jar and you can just make up like a dry mixture of like overnight oats chia seeds stuff like this and maybe some protein powder and just put some water in it and make it up there making up your own bars like try and prep in some of your own food even if you're taking like you know, snack bars, nuts, you know, stuff like this that you can just put into your bag um, and uh, and not have to rely on the plain food. Uh, the biggest thing is to try and keep the same kind of eating structure as you would if you were not on a 14 hour flight. So whether that's eating every three hours or whether that's eating like a meal, snack, meal, uh, and there. Like, like in the airports you can buy like, you know, salads and, and meals and take them on the planes now. So I would definitely advise to do that. Keeping hydrated uh, as well, you mentioned dehydration, just regularly sipping throughout the whole flight. Um, trying to minimize actual kind of caffeine and tea intake on the flight um, and then using that as a pre-workout when you land or when you're gonna do the, the, um, the workout is a really, really kind of beneficial thing. Like caffeine is a massive kind of performance booster. So if you kind of restrict it during the flight, it's gonna minimize dehydration, then you can hit it up there and you'll get the kind of better effects or pre-workout. Um, like Lee mentioned the good thing there like paying a little bit extra to go into one of the lounges like that's a great thing like uh, it's all free once you get in so uh, yeah, you so can you, load up <laughs> yeah you can load up I think some of them as well I think between 30 to 50 pounds you get massages you get yeah. um, you know you get opportunity to take a shower to freshen up this type of thing just a quick hello to some people that have kind of tuned in so we've had Chris Gubbins in Justine we've had Max 
Uh, Laria, we've got, I think Cal's still watching. Well done, pal. Skipping work as well. Uh, Karima's in there as well. Evie's watching, just signed in from the uh, from her, her cookery school. Um, I've got a couple more things on that. Yeah. Just when you land as well, like there's some research out there for doing a little bit of aerobic work. So depending on the times when you're going to do it, Miguel, like if you land and then you're literally going to do it within like a three hour period, then obviously just kind of like get in and do a thorough warm up, like, you know, moving through the movements. But if you're not going to do it till like later in the, like the next day or whatever, like using the hotel gym and just doing like 20 minutes of aerobic low intensity, so like nothing that's going to raise your heart rate like above 70%, um, has been shown to kind of reset uh, and, and kind of like kickstart your body back into like the, the time time zone. So just doing a little bit of a low intensity aerobic work uh, is, is been shown to be a massive help in terms of reducing the effects of jet lag. The other thing is light, so making sure that to kind of regulate your body's kind of clock, you made sure that you get exposure to light at the correct time, so early in the morning, um, and then kind of like making sure that you sleep in a super, super dark room if you need to go to bed, um, and to try and kind of get back into a routine straight away. The other thing is to try, really try and lower pro-inflammatory foods and increase anti-inflammatory foods. So we can, you know, we can get that like cankles on uh, on planes and stuff like this and a bit of swelling. So they're really thinking about like removing these kind of like inflammatory foods such as like white breads and deep fried food and pastries and, mm -hmm. and stuff like this, which we all want to eat when we're on holiday. But if you can just do that in the, in the time pre leading into your session, you know, and if you crush it, which I know you will do, then load up afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, the, the big thing on the wear compression thing, it yeah. works for me. I've just done a, a, a long flight to Australia. I needed the compression. Um, movement as well, go speak to their hosts. Or Miguel, just pony up and just go first class. That might be <laughs> an option for you. Um, so then we've got a couple of things, a couple more questions. Uh, not too much more to do. Uh, we're traveling in March. Can I do some open workouts? at Shapesmiths and some overseas. Yes, you can. Speak to the box owner that you're gonna go and visit overseas to get them to validate your score for you. We can't validate the score if you do it at another gym. Um, da, 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 da. We've that. kind of covered Vicky's question, was, which is what can we do to optimize nutrition 24 to 48 hours before, which is basically make sure that you're, the, the, the tank is full. Um, but, but don't carb load on the day of, do it all before. Um, okay, we've got, I think Cal might still be here. There's six people watching still, so. So Cal asked, uh, which previous workout do we think will be repeated? And do we have to bring our own clothes or will uniforms be provided? Um, <laughs> still with the first one. Uh, which previous workout do you think is going to be repeated, mate? Uh, I have a million percent they're going to do 17.1. The, yeah. the, the update on standards for both of those things, burpees and snatches. Yeah. I think that that will be included. Maybe. Cool. Well, I'll let you have Liam's recommendation on that. I personally don't care because I think you're yeah. all going to be prepared for whatever they throw at you because we've done, been, we've done plenty of it um, over the past year. Um, what else we got? Scaled RX, what should I do? There's an article on the members page. Uh, in the files section, we've got uh, Kate and Kat. Grocock, not well, obviously Grocock's not no. Kate's last name, they're not no. married. No. Um, Kate Wisdom, Cat Grocock. What are your top tips for preparing for the CrossFit Open workouts? Um, what physical and mental prep should we consider uh, if we do the Open in the morning? So, I mean, I've got some basics here. So, before you do the workout, you should have ticked off the following you should have watched the standards video. Um, and you should have read the standards as well on the PDF guide that comes down. You should have read that. Check out the live show if you want to in the morning, catch up show. Um, also, if you're not doing it in the morning, check out the videos that we usually put out with top, with top tips on the workouts. We usually do a kind of video series. Um, and then what I'd say is what's really good, if you're doing it in the morning especially, think back to the recent Instagram post and hopefully what the coaches have been trying to teach you uh, about mental toughness days. So the four uh, main points. So you need to focus on your breathing is gonna be a big regulator uh, of your body. Uh, small goals, so it's big. if it's a big chipper, so it's like 27, 25, 21, it's kind of going down. Small goals are gonna add up to a, a, bigger, a bigger achievement. Mental rehearsal is really good to imagine yourself doing it as you kind of coming into 
uh, into the class and also just being positive with yourself and just encouraging for yourself. There'll be a really good environment in the gym, mm. uh, but just kind of reinforce that in your own head as well. So yeah, that's really how, from a mental side of uh, side of things, you should do it. Um, what else have we got here? So prepping mentally, top tips for those busting the open cherry. Don't don't worry about it. Just keep just coming enjoy in. Enjoy it. Yeah, it's just another workout. If it's your first time, it doesn't mean that much just to get a score on the board and just get some experience, which is really good. Like I said, the accountability is the biggest thing. That's why we want you to sign up. Um, da, 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 da. I can't do any of the open workouts. I'm injured. Can I still come and be a judge for somebody and soak up the positive vibes? Of course you can. Percent. Yes, you can. Do I need to do the online judges course? You only need to do the online judges course if you are going to be judging somebody that may qualify for regionals. That's the next stage of the competition. So you don't have to do it, but it's a very good course, to be honest. It's actually easier this year. I did it yesterday. Uh, it's actually easier this year than, than, than previously, but it's more educational. So very good. I, I well done, did. CrossFit. Yeah, well done. Well done, CrossFit. I'm just going to jump in on Waleed's question there. Um, oh yeah, Waleed! So it is a difficult question and it is a little bit more kind of personalised. He's asked about how to solve the difficult equation of um, if he wants to lose weight by being on a strict diet or in the same time as trying to exercise and, and improve performance. Um, he said he finds himself deprived of energy during workouts and it's that balance that he kind of finds a, a little bit difficult. Uh, like That's probably one of the... the the primary areas that we work with people on in finding that balance and, and finding that structure that works in terms of like fueling it for performance and getting the most out of your membership uh, as opposed to kind of trying to like change body composition. Um, again, kind of touching on what I said before is like using this five weeks to almost not think about like trying to lose weight or being in a deficit. You can, you know, it's only one workout, it's only one time, like it's like probably 20 minutes of your whole week. So fueling for that, you need to be thinking about, right, can I put a little bit more? Well, eat, if you're feeling like the pride of energy, then, you know, without you knowing are. what your diet, <laughs> you're probably under fueling. So what, something that we do in terms of like evening sessions, so I'll do morning sessions in a minute or midday. So evening sessions, a common thing that we see with people is under fueling. So they eat lunch uh, and then they either get caught up during meetings, work or just forget. And then all of a sudden, they come in on the way to the box and they're like, oh my God, I haven't eaten in like five hours, six hours, and they're grabbing something. And then all of a sudden, you're trying to chase that nutrition leading into the half six, six o'clock, 7.30 class. So a little bit of planning, a little bit of structure in terms of eating maybe two and a half or three hours before. And we want that snack to be uh, a good blend of like protein and carbohydrates. So we need to be thinking about, uh, like the CrossFit Open is a hard, you know, it's a hard workout, it's not easy. So we need to be thinking about giving our body that fuel. Carbohydrates are the primary source of fuel during these high intensity workouts. So we need to be giving that body, giving your body that kind of like fuel um, to be able to kind of maximize your performance there. Again, like I spoke about, <laughs> so, um, like I spoke about the Subsequent meals is when you maybe can go into that deficit and, and when you're doing like nothing on a Saturday or a Sunday or whatever, that's when maybe you can kind of like drop your carbohydrates and your calories to be able to kind of uh, offset the, the two days before when you've upped your calories and carbohydrates leading into the session. I hope that makes sense. Like, I don't want to get into too much personalization, but for evening, people that come in in the evening, don't come in without eating like a pre-workout snack or using some form of nutrition, either that's a smoothie, whether that's like uh, like a snack pot, whether that's a homemade raw ball, whether that's half of like an extra from your lunch, whatever. Like just making sure that that three-hour period that you have something in the in the tank, um, and then you're coming into like rare into go. Just to kind of go back onto morning training again, the night before or the two days before, if you're going to get up, don't change what you're doing. Uh, if you train without eat, eating, so if you train fasted, then more than happy, keep that structure if that works for you. However, the next kind of how long have we got? Three weeks, two weeks? I would definitely encourage you to practice either using some form of like liquid nutrition or getting up a little bit earlier and, uh, and eating something prior to your, to your morning session. If you do the 5.30 or if you do the 6 o'clock, then liquid nutrition, whether that's a beanbag coffee, whether that's... Um, some uh, like a, some protein and some uh, carbohydrate powder, whether that's a smoothie, even just something like a banana, then using that and seeing how you feel. And be aware, be aware how that makes you feel in terms of like previous sessions. Does it give you a bit more energy, or actually no, I feel too full. 
and just kind of practice it in the next kind of like two weeks so you go into the into the into the workout knowing what works for you it's not that there isn't like a one size fits all so me to say like definitely need to eat before a morning session is uh, it might not work for some people however if you're not going to eat the day before becomes so crucial so you need to be thinking about getting that like that enough kind of like um uh, calories, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats uh, in that in that kind of like Thursday or the two days prior. If you're gonna do midday, then you have an opportunity to perfectly kind of fuel for that. So if you're doing a 10:30 or if you're doing a 12:30, I would encourage you to have breakfast and a pre-workout snack. So you could get up and have some eggs and, and some uh, frittata or an omelet, or you can have some overnight oats. And then prior to that, you can have again that protein and carbohydrate based. So whether that's a smoothie, whether that's a pancake. Uh, again, coming in and having some uh, a coffee or one of the raw balls or something like this, but that opportunity to he- eat twice before is is uh, is definitely recommended. Yeah. Hydration as well. Sorry to go on. Hydration. Making sure you're hydrating and coffee doesn't count. Water. <laughs> Water. <laughs> uh, very good. Next one we've got on the topic of recovery from. Hannah Rogers, uh, how can we optimize our recovery during these five weeks and set ourselves up for success? So I think the first one is back to the file section. There's an overtraining guide on Facebook. Hannah, I think you've got it on the Fitbot, which is something we use together. Uh, So the overtraining guide is super simple. You can just look at signs and symptoms um, just to double check and see uh, what the appropriate action is to remedy the situation. So there's like a table in there as well. So if you're um, feeling a certain way, you can do this action. So it's very easy to kind of go through and figure out what you should do. Um, Also, optimize your recovery. We've got the Livewell Clinic. We're in one of the clinic rooms at the moment. We've stolen it, taken it over. Uh, The Livewell Clinic, um, that's our medical team, okay, at CrossFit Shapesmiths. They're setting up with a post workout massage kind of the first week so 18.1 it's the first friday in the crossfit open and then they've got little packages that they are selling that you can buy multiple massages for a little bit of a discount um another thing we can do to optimize our recovery is to actually warm up properly so uh you make sure you're prepped for the workout and you're not in like some kind of a deficit uh we'll post videos for that type of thing and also that you cool down appropriately we'll also give advice on that that's what the coaches are there for but i think one of the biggest things uh, obviously sleep is huge make sure you're getting a large quantity of and then um also nutrition prep make sure make sure that you've uh Make sure you've, you kind of listen to this guy and make sure you take on all his advice. We've got a few more people coming in just real quick. Just want to say hello to them. So we've got Guy Luff. Blast on the past, bro. Uh, Andy McTaggart's jumped in here. He's been throwing likes and love hearts and laughing all over the place. I'm sure he'll <laughs> enjoy a mention. He says, nice haircut, Liam. Thanks, mate. Um, got two left. <laughs> <laughs> then Adrian's in. Bonjour, hello. Alex is here, Alex White. Hello to you, mate. Shelly Cock has just joined us. Amazing. Um, g'day, Shell. G'day. Andy's, Andy's liking the hell out of it. Um, so, yeah, so that nutrition prep. So, then we've got a question from Kat Grocock, who has Rainhill on the Sunday before. I know this is far from ideal, but any advice on the four days in between in terms of optimizing recovery and prep? So, I'll jump in here, like... The competition on, I think you're competing on a Saturday, so I would definitely say that there's a, there's a kind of um, a, a, t- a, temptation, a temptation to like, oh, I've done my competition, and then kind of like treat meal, eat off plan, like all of this stuff, but you've just kind of like caused a lot of inflammation in your body there, and I would definitely say like eat big, but eat a little bit cleaner, so like trying to remove that, like so if you're going to have a pizza, for example, Go to like a really nice place that, that does like you know nothing kind of like uh, processed meats or, or, or poor quality cheese. Go and have something that's a little bit more fresher and just remove those kind of like inflammatory foods and like focus on anti-inflammatory foods. Save like the, the treat meal for, for away from that kind of workout window. So I would definitely say eat a little bit more in the in, on the Saturday evening and the Sunday and the Monday. Um, def- definitely try and like if you can sleep a little bit more 
uh, whether that's going to bed a little bit earlier or in a, on a Sunday, kind of having a nap, paying off a bit of that sleep there. That's where your body regenerates and repairs, so definitely trying to do something like this. The other thing is to make sure that you don't go long periods without eating because you've depleted a lot of your systems, like you put a body under a lot of stress. So even if you're just kind of a little bit more maybe regular meals or adding in an extra kind of like snack uh, or something like a smoothie or... Um, like a soup, like a like will really kind of help in getting those veggies and kind of like all those antioxidants to help you recover. The that will kind of co coincide with like your training program and, and and the guys can advise you on that. But from a nutrition point of view, it's it's like you cause that stress. Don't kind of add to it by trying to chase it and think you've got to prep. Eat big, but eat a little bit cleaner, um, and then save the uh, the treat meal for for after. Cool. So then Craig's back in again with another question. Uh, tips on nutrition and sleep recovery after staying up past 1am to watch the live announcements. Now, I yeah. think this may be a little bit tongue-in-cheek, <laughs> but we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt and we're going to answer it for you, Craig. Yeah. Um, so, so I think that the biggest one is, is um, if you can avoid it, if you can not stay up, then just go to bed and just see it in the morning because I believe they do put it on YouTube. Um, but what, one of the biggies that I think Liam's kind of mentioned before with Miguel's question about the kind of long kind of flights is just make sure that you're the sleep uh, early, earlier in the day or the day before, make sure you pay off the sleep debt uh, earlier in the day, dark room, that type of stuff is all kind of basics. Uh, but have you got any more specifics? If you're doing the morning class, if you're doing the 5.30 or 6 o'clock or 6.30, like, like get up and watch it over your breakfast or watch it over your coffee. You don't need to stay up till 1 o'clock, like it's not that exciting. Um, in my eyes, um, I just think you're going you're to negate your, your performance effects by only having four hours sleep. Yeah, or just wake up and just check your phone and go, okay, cool. Yeah. I'm fucked. Bye. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no, exactly. Uh, Thrusters. Yeah. The other thing is, like, if you do want to stay up, then again, utilizing things like, uh, I would definitely say, like, using like eggs in the morning. Uh, they have choline, which is uh, like a. Uh, a precursor to like some neurotransmitters that help energy production as opposed to kind of like thinking, oh, I'm tired, I need a load of sugars. Maybe focusing on a little bit more of a balanced meal such as like um, overnight oats with some egg or some like scrambled egg um, and some, some toast and avocado. Like getting some healthy fats in the morning will really, really help in terms of like stabilizing energy levels over the day. And then you're utilizing that. Again, that's a similar thing to that protein and carbohydrates around your workout window. The other thing is to look use coffee, but don't use too much. Um, so like, so Dave Harrison only seven cups, yeah. not ten. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perfect. Uh, like that's one of the that's one of the things there. Like uh, for us, it's it's not to kind of use sugary snacks uh, or like sugars that give you that kind of short burst of energy. If you're feeling a little bit tired or if you haven't kind of slept well, and it's actually using more balanced meals um, and then kind of pushing the carbohydrates to to pre workout. Hello Emmanuel, hello Naomi. Are you guys skiving? No, Emmanuel won't be skiving off work because he'll either be here right now or he'll be going to work. Just finished. Yeah, Naomi, she's definitely skiving. She's, she's a skiver. Um, so then, uh, yeah, that, that really kind of wraps it up. Katie Howard had a question about changing her nutrition. Should she change it? Well, the answer is no. I think we've kind of gone through all that and little things to do. So scroll back through. So what we're going to do, we're going to um, kind of call it there, really. Um, and what we'll do is we'll post our notes. We'll kind of uh, tidy them up a little bit with all the questions on them. And we'll post them uh, in a link underneath this video. Uh, so you've just got the basics, the bullet points. But if you want to watch the video, then of course you can you can um, sit and, and uh, sit through forty odd minutes of uh, of us chatting away. Okay. So without further ado, I think that's that's it. All good. Thank you. Thank you. I've been Rory McKernan. I've been Pat Sherwood. And but goodbye for now. See you next week. <laughs>